our road trip moves on north to Springbok, the largest town in Namakwaland. As with most towns in this region, the church takes centre stage, with a Klipkerk dominating. Springbok was born out of the copper mining industry that shaped the region since it was mined by Westerners from 1865. Almost exactly two centuries earlier, in 1685, Simon van der Stel led an expedition which sank a shaft and discovered copper near Springbok. This is now a national monument, together with the old smelting furnace built by the Cape Copper Mining Company in 1866. Around about 20 years after the establishment of this mine, uh, a guy with the name James Alexander came across uh, some high-grade copper at Oakip. So the whole mining facility uh, um, was relocated to Oakip. Uh, but not the town. The town remained because of the nice water here. Before they established the town, the Nama people call, called this place Kuhas. Kuhas meaning Springbok Fountain or the place where the Springbok came to drink, to drink water. And the name was shortened late, later to Springbok. Springbok Fountain first and then it became Springbok. Although the mining activity has dwindled, the town flourishes from tourism, strategically located at the crossroads of the N7 to Namibia, and the N14 to Uppington and Johannesburg. This is flower country and no trip would be complete without a visit to its epicenter, the Namakwa National Park. We get about 15,000 people coming through. Um, mostly, most of them come in flower season. We get about 10,000 people coming flower season. Then December, January, quite a lot of people going down to the coast as well. And then uh, people staying in the chalets through the rest of the year. Um, the flowers up here are more your daisies, like these orange daisies we see around here, the Ursinias and then your um, Gazanias. We're probably known for flowers, um, but it's only two months of the year, August, September. But the rest of the year we got uh, quite a bit of eco trails, uh, 4x4 trails you can drive. And then people can do general relaxation, things like uh, mountain biking, camping um, and just walking in the, in the park. A majestic tapestry unfolds along the winding roads of the Skilpat section of the park. Butterflies and birds darting among the flowers make for a breathtaking spectacle. Each turn in the road unveils a new colour-filled vista, with tour buses slowly meandering along the circular route. Namakwaland is home to the richest bulb flora of any arid region in the world, and more than a thousand of its estimated 3,500 plant species are found nowhere else on earth. This section of the path in particular draws visitors from all corners of the globe. Yes, I enjoyed and just uh, uh, we arrived here in Namakwaland uh, this afternoon, but uh, we enjoyed our beautiful flowers in West Coast National Park so far. Then we are very uh, looking forward to seeing uh, more, more and more uh, beautiful flowers here. But it was not just the flowers that drew us to the park. Manager Bernard van Lente and his wife Elanza are also responsible for an innovative Skeppis project within the park. They are breeding Anatolian mountain dogs as a predator management method for farmers. The project has been started about five, six years ago. The purpose of the project was to give it to farmers that can't normally afford these dogs. Um, the dogs normally go for about 1,200 rand to 6,000 rand in the market. And in exchange for the dog, um, we want the farmers to stop um, putting out uh, uh, traps um, because a lot of the innocent little animals like the art fark, um, the bat-eared fox get killed in, in the trap as well. Uh, so we give the dogs, we don't train them on site, um, but we go out to the farmer, uh, we give them a manual, we go through the manual. Um, if they get stuck with the training of the dog, we go out to the farm, we help them with the training of the dog and um, in exchange for that, um, they basically uh, stop the traps or they give us the traps. We left the Namakwa National Park to travel to Okip, where we meet Robert Richards, owner of Namakwa Pride, a producer of soaps, shampoos and lotions containing kraalbos and rooibos extract. The product that they manufacture here at the moment is the Rebo soap, Krabo soap, Krabo shampoo, foot and heel balm uh, lotion. This product also contains Krabos. And then I've got a new product that I'm still working on. It's called the Solid Wrap-On Perfume. The ladies can use it for um, 
say for instance they want to quickly put on perfume or so, uh, they can just drop it into the wrist and out uh, behind the ears. Okip is tiny, but it belies the fact that it was once home to the richest copper mine in the world and the site of the first shaft sunk by Simon van der Stel. In keeping with the concept of synchronizing Skeppi's projects, Robert will be sourcing his main raw material, glycerine, from another project, Nam Petroleum, run by Earl Miller in nearby Concordia. He makes glycerine as a byproduct from converting used cooking oil into biofuel. With biofuel, mostly what we do is we, we try to get um, um, supplies of oil. Because in the Makroland there's not a lot of um, used cooking oil. Um, it's a very small population. There's not very large businesses that, that provides um, oil. So we try to actually um, build those links for the, the specific pro, uh, pro program to, to access the, the supply of oil, use with oil. The reason why I started the business is because I was looking for something unique in the area and I wanted to, to have a business that nobody else is running uh, to make it more sustainable and profit, profitable. Uh, there are numerous benefits uh, of biodiesel uh, between regular diesel and biodiesel. For instance, biodiesel is environmental friendly. It emits up to 87% less carbon dioxide. Uh, uh, it's safe for humans. It's non-biodegradable, it's non-toxic and it's not, not flammable. In Concordia, the Latitude team were treated to an age-old musical experience. The Nama Stup is a variation of the real dance common to the region, complete with a band that has been around longer than the Rolling Stones. Omdat ons Griek was a traditional folk is, is a real dance mos nou in ons. En ons is mos almal kulturele volke hier langs en Die Nama dans maakt deel uit van ons culturele volk en dus hoe kom ons betrokken is bij de organisatie. Concordia is thought to be the site of the first known mining in South Africa where the Koi extracted copper for bangles and jewelry. With a massive cold front chasing us, we hit the N14 for the last of our stops, the iconic village of Pella. It was named in 1814 by a missionary after the ancient Greek town that became a refuge for persecuted Christians from the Romans, Pella started out as an oasis that became a mission station. This church was hand-built by two priests in the late 1800s, using only a picture from a book as a guide. Uh, Father Simon and Father Wolf, the two priests from Paris, France, they were sent by their superior, Father Louis Brisson, in 1882. When they arrived here, they met a pastor. So they negotiate and the pastor left and they started to continue with the mission. So they continued to, to work here in this mission station. Two sisters were teachers, one was a nurse. Father Bekule brought along with him an encyclopedia. So they, they decided to build a cathedral in the wilderness. A proposal in 2008 to turn Pella into a giant movie set was rejected by the community who were reluctant to commercialize this unique piece of the Northern Cape. Pella today sees a strong alignment with tourism to create a sustainable future and is becoming increasingly popular as a tourist destination. Current and planned tourism projects are expected to add value and jobs to the community of over 5,000 residents. Tourists who from outside come is very difficult to uh, um, na, um, plat te wees. As hulle hier in Pella kom, dan wil hulle na ronde het slaap met een beesmisvloer. Dis wat hulle vraag. Hulle wil in die open licht slaap, want hulle sê daar buiten het hulle nie die geleentheid om buitenkant te kan slaap hier, want dis baie rof. And with that, the sun burst out and bathed the oasis in light and we bid a reluctant farewell to Pella. Wow, this is definitely going to feature on my travel itinerary next year. I'm going to start making my bookings right now. So while I do that, let's check out the latest developments in e-tourism at the 6th Annual E-Tourism Conference in Cape Town.
The internet has revolutionized the way people travel. Using computers and mobile devices, tourists are becoming their own travel agents. Websites, apps and social networks are all tools to plan and book holidays. Well, travel online is massive. Uh, it's the number one sold commodity online in the States at the moment. Um, they've grown incredibly. Uh, the, the numbers quoted are in excess of 60% over the last couple of years. Um, the, the revenues are through the roof. Um, consumers are using online to make all their decisions online as far as travel destinations go. 90% um, of decisions are being made online and that's what uh, the United Nations World Travel Organization quote. Um, it's unbelievable in terms of how online and particularly social media have changed how people plan their trips and how people share their trips. And because social media and, and uh, the internet being in your pockets through your mobile device really becomes the key thing that, that drives that brag factor. I want to show people where I am, what I'm doing. But at the same time, it really entices people to consider destinations and places or experiences that they may not have ever come across on their own. Uh, well, it really is booming. You've got 98% of travellers going on the internet to decide where they're going to travel and almost 60% booking and buying it in that space as well. So it's a predominant marketplace for travel. Um, the other thing people need to be aware of once you bring social media into play is the huge role social media is playing in, in referrals of travel sales as well. You've got 73% of travellers now updating Facebook and other social networks every day while they're travelling on holidays, posting their photos, not waiting to show people when they get home, but doing it as they travel. And that audience of family and friends responding to it and engaging with them, and that's a huge marketing opportunity. For them. Tourism is a vital contributor to the South African economy. It adds more to gross domestic product than the automotive industry and sustains more jobs than the mining sector, according to Tourism Minister Martinus van Skalkveik. Uh, last year we had 10,2% growth compared to the previous year. Spend was up from international tourists, uh, 84 billion rand. Yes, the emerging markets are starting to perform extremely well for us. I'm very aware that a few years ago people were quite critical that we rebalanced our portfolio. But first quarter this year compared to the first quarter last year, growth from China 37%, India 22%, Nigeria 22%. It's looking good. With over a billion users on Facebook alone, social networks mean the world is now more connected than ever. South Africa's tourism sector has had to adapt to the fast-changing environment to gain a competitive edge as a world-class tourist destination. We are using all the, the social media platforms. We are on Facebook, we are also on Twitter. We have lots of bloggers that are, uh, that are actually creating a lot of content for us. But we don't just stop there. We also partner with some of the very key partners that you've got here, like the Googles, we partner with the TripAdvisor. Our cooperation with them is actually one of its kind, the first of its kind uh, internationally, where we are even used as a, a, study, a, a case study in South Africa. We also work very well with Expedia, which is an online travel agency network generating quite a lot of revenue for the country. So we're not in this thing just for the social part of it. We are pushing volumes, we're pushing profitability as well. Social networks play a key role in leveling the playing field. Smaller players in the tourism industry can implement highly successful, low-budget online campaigns with the potential to rapidly grow their business. Oh, that's, that's the most exciting part, because you can't fake it anymore. In the old days, you could deliver a crappy experience, but if you had deep pockets, that you could basically put a, a thin layer of veneer on it and advertise it so that people would show up. But these days you can't do that anymore. So it all starts with the experience. So if you're even the, the tiniest player, if you're doing a really good job, if you deliver a remarkable experience, then people will talk about that and people and other people will come as a result. So it levels the playing field, it's awesome. So how does a backpacker or lodge owner in a remote part of the country, but with access to the internet, utilize technology to grow their business? This conference really focuses on how we can take travel and technology and bring those two together and like you say, bridge that gap for the, the big operators all the way down to the smaller guys. They need to understand what technology is out there and most importantly, they need to understand what consumers are doing. If we're not going to be consumer centric, we're going to miss opportunities. So it's important that we don't choose to put all of our time and energy into one platform like Facebook for instance, which may change the landscape completely in a year or two's time. We really need to be led by what the consumer is doing, understand where they are, understand how they are processing information and sharing it. And if we can get that understanding brought into how we market ourselves and how we want to position ourselves, that's one of the key things. Social networks also enable advertisers to deliver a cheap yet highly effective marketing campaign with global reach. The Battle at Kruger is a wildlife video captured at South Africa's Kruger National Park. 
The clip went viral and now has over 72 million views. And it's been a life changer for the amateur filmmaker who has sold the rights to National Geographic for a documentary. If we had to shoot the battle at Kruger, agencies would charge us a fortune. Finding great user-generated content and, and really finding a way to amplify it and finding a way to push it into our platforms and get more people to see it, that's really what destination marketers need to do nowadays because we can't compete on the same scale and very often it's the consumers who get to see our brand or understand our experience better than we sometimes do when it comes to packaging and trying to get that branded content out there. Digital marketing has yielded positive results for South Africa with online sales now exceeding 770 million rand annually. The official tourism website, SouthAfrica.net, attracts over 3.2 million visits a year. It's key in influencing many people to travel to South Africa's shores thanks to a content strategy targeting consumers in 18 different markets around the world. Thomas Marie, Cape Town, South Africa.